In this video, I'm going to be upgrading my Amiga from OS version 3.2 to version 3.2.1. So while it's booting, I'll show you this. I removed these Kickstart 3.2 ROMs and replaced them with the 3.2.1 Kickstart ROMs I'd recently flashed. So now we've got the, uh, the Amiga booted up, ROMs installed. I have already copied the necessary disks you can see there, Kickstart version 1.47.102. Um, yeah, this is where my GoTech was leaning on the F10 key. So nothing exactly uh, critical there. <laughs> Just a quick move and it's all well. Now when I did uh, initially post up the pictures of the flashed uh, Kickstart ROMs, I posted up, I'll, sh I'll see if they work in a few hours. Well. This was about 20 minutes later. I'm typing, leaning over things. Uh, yeah, I have no patience. So I've already got the uh, ADFs on a GoTech flash drive. So now we gotta just set up the update disk. Install. Lots of languages there. So many languages. You'll see even you'll see really more when it comes to the uh, a little bit later when I have to find the locale file. Okay. This program updates hard drive installations of Amiga operating system 3.2 to release 3.2.1. Now I don't want a novice because I want to choose a few things. We go intermediate, install for real. Yes, I do want it installed in the Amiga OS partition. We'll have English, British. Yeah, we'll move it, just as a backup. Just in case it's necessary. And we begin the copy. Now, yep, yeah, installations do sometimes take quite a while especially when you're upgrading an entire operating system surprisingly this one doesn't take long at all and especially since it's loading from floppy disk at least emulated floppy disk at floppy disk speeds I have to hasten to hasten to add Quite a lot on this one floppy. There we go. All I do now is select a different floppy from the GoTech. which it automatically picks up. Classes. Now it's only taking the ones it needs. The off-center screen is a result of the converter from SCAT to HDMI. But I thought I'd do this raw back. The 15% done refers to the number of disks. It's a weird thing, it's the same as just about every other install, it's not exactly ac accurate. There we are, now we want Disk Doctor. Just a single file. Now, yeah, I didn't copy the right locale. However, I had a plan B. 
so my plan B is I copied the whole bunch of install floppies onto a compact flash which I've installed via PCMCIA. I need to show all files here because they're ADFs and with with Workbench 3.2 you can just double click on an ADF to mount it. Uh, okay now they're all over the place here what do I do? Widen the window. Nope still not going to find it very easily here. Look at them all. Look at them all. Locales and modules all over the place. So easiest way to do this is a view by name. And now I have them alphabetically. Now I can see exactly what I need. And that's the one I need. Only trouble is I don't actually know it's actually mounted here until I try and mount it again. <laughs> Couldn't have mount the disk image. That's because it's already mounted. So I'll minimize that. There we are. You can see it's actually copying the right files now. It's now complete. See? It went from 23% to 100% done. So we will proceed to allow it to reboot. Nice black screen. On the Amiga itself, there's a nice little flashy hard disk activity light. Even though the hard disk is a compact flash. And there we go, it's booted up. Take a look now at the about message. Release 3.2.1. Workbench version 47.3. And that's it. All done. Thank you for watching. A really boring update process. Catch you on the next one. Ta-ra now.